it's Belinda. Today I'm here to share my first layout for Mini Kit Monday. This month in January, I am one of the guest designers for the Mini Kit Monday Challenge group. I do have all of the details about the challenge, the lovely ladies who participate in my description box below. If you are interested in joining in, go ahead and join the Facebook group, the Mini Kit Monday Challenge Facebook group, and all the details are in there about how to put your kit together and you'll also get to see lots of inspiration from the other people who are participating. But for this layout today, I am using a cut file as the title. So this is a cut file that I purchased from cut to you It actually said hashtag heart this life, but I just wanted my title to say heart this. So I did make some adjustments to it in the Silhouette Studio software before I sent it through to my Cameo to cut out. And as you can see, I do have the outline cut out with some plain white textured cardstock. Basil is my favorite for that. And I've also cut the backing for the cut file from some of the light wood grain paper, patterned paper that I had in the kit that I had put together. And the reason I chose that light wood grain for the backing is because my photos and my story that I'm talking about is being on the beach. And I thought that that light wood grain was kind of reminiscent of the, the sand on the beach, which isn't truly white, but yeah, I think it kind of evokes some of those feelings. So I've applied some of my wet adhesive, that Art Institute Glitter Glue with the fine metal tip is my favorite adhesive. I'm so glad that I've found it. And I'm just making sure that that's all lined up really well. Don't want any bits hanging over. And that's it, I'll pop that aside to dry. So I've taken, I did have a little bit of a boo-boo when I was cutting it out. So you can see that it was cut out twice from that paper, but I don't want to waste that textured cardstock. So I've cut a border out from the outside and then I'm going to use the inside pieces as my photo mats. So I have three photos on this layout, which you would have quickly seen at the start of the video. One is the classic hot dogs or legs photo uh, on the beach looking out across the sand to the water then there's two photos of me laying down on my beach chair just enjoying the sun so I am going to white mat these photos onto some of that white cardstock if you've watched any of my previous videos you'll know that I pretty much always mat my photos onto white cardstock I like the little bit of extra uh, dimension that it gives me and I also just like the definition that it gives to the photo so for my photos, I had two square photos and one was landscape, which was the orientation that the photo was originally taken in. And I end up going with a grid layout, which you'll see shortly. I didn't really have anything in mind on how I wanted to put this together. I just kind of went with the flow and it did flow fairly easily, which was good. Sometimes I like to have an idea before I go in or I like to use a sketch but with this one I just kind of went with it and I think it turned out really well. So my photo is just slightly too small to sit inside that chipboard frame which was in my kit which I want to use so I've just matted it on a slightly bigger mat, white cardstock mat so that the frame's got something to hold on to and I've added some double-sided adhesive tape and I'm just going to stick that down on top of that photo. The photo I printed that photo out in black and white because the colors were not really cohesive with the colors in the other two photos and also it was just a little bit out of focus it was taken with a slightly older iPhone so I went with black and white. So my background paper is this gorgeous ombre pink paper from the Heidi Swap Pineapple Crush collection. It's so beautiful. I absolutely love it. But I am going to trim it down to 11 and a half by 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. And that's because I am going to add that white matte border around the outside. Again, if you've been watching any of my previous videos, you'll know that adding a border mat to my page is something that I'm a really big fan on fan of so I do do it quite a lot with my pages the next thing I'm going to do once I finished messing around with my paper trimmer I'm just going to pop it down and I'm going to just lay play around with how I want this laid out so I did know that I wanted the heart this title to go to the right of the larger photo 
but I wasn't quite sure how I was going to place the others. Then I realized that I can use that title to fill in that tiny little bit of negative space in the photo and I can kind of create a, an offset grid with my photos. Now you'll see here that originally I had planned on having the, the photo with the frame around it on the left, but that's not how I end up at sticking them down. I wish I had done it the other way around, but I st had stuck them down before I remembered. So I've grabbed my distressing tool, which is something that I've rediscovered a love for recently. And I am going to really, really go to town roughing up those edges. Again, because this is a beachy layout, I don't know, for some reason, distressed, maybe it's that, that, um, the weathered look that comes from being close to the ocean that really I think that really works well for this layout so I have gone really quite hard with my distressing tool and then I also decided I wanted to go back to one of my old techniques which I used to use all the time on my layouts and had completely forgotten about and I'm going to tear a notch into some of the sides. So then you get to see a little peak of the backing paper, which is a bright pink polka dot. And I'm also then going to bring in some of the minty green to sit behind that little torn edge. So I've just torn the edges really roughly and then I've folded them over. And then I'm going to grab this mint green paper, which has got some rose gold foil diamonds, just some really small diamond patterns. I'm going to trim a strip of off that, which is two by two. And then I'm going to cut that down. Sorry, it's a two inch strip, which I'm going to cut down into two by two squares. And then I'm going to adhere those to the back of that patterned paper just using a small piece of double-sided tape. And the reason I'm not sticking it down really well is because I take it over and run it through my sewing machine to add some super, super messy stitches. So I'm just adding the adhesive to the back, the inside edge of those because I don't want there to be any adhesive that my sewing machine's gonna run over. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of a thin double sided tape to the inside of that frame. Just It's just enough to hold my backing paper, my paper in place without it slipping around, but it's not close enough to the edge that my sewing machine needle is going to run through the adhesive and get all gummed up and yucky and sticky and ruined. I've just eyeballed this. I didn't bring out my T-square ruler because it is really rough and ready. It was pretty easy to eyeball. And if it's not quite on in the center, you're not going to notice it because it is so distressed that you're not going to notice if it's slightly off center. So now that that's stuck down, I'm going to take it away to my sewing machine and then bring it back and show you. I ended up going around three times with a darker pink thread. And I've also added a little bit of messy stitching at the top end of each of those tears. I kind of wish I hadn't have added the stitching to the top end of those tears. I don't think it adds a lot to it, but it's done now. So now I'm going to get on to the business of backing my papers, backing my photos with some of these pattern papers from my kit. So I'm going to start off with this scripty print paper to back the main photo just to bring in a little bit of black and white. I do have some pops of black and white throughout this layout. So I think this script is a really nice, you don't know, you can't actually read any of the text, the mats pretty fine so you can't actually read any of the text on it but it just adds a nice bit of black and white then I'm going to go back and use a little bit more of this minty gold foiled paper and I do want to apologize I'm not sure why the camera kept going out of focus I think my husband was using the photo the camera today to take some photos so I think perhaps the settings changed so it does go in and out of focus a few times and I apologize for that so I've added a torn edge to the left hand to the right hand side of that photo because again I wanted to keep things fairly distressed throughout this layout and pretty soft. So I've added the torn edge to the right hand side of the main photo and then I'm going to use the what was left of the torn edge 
and I'm going to add it to the left hand side of that photo. And this is where I've made the slight mistake. Really, I should have done this matting and torn edge onto the photo that was in the frame because that's the photo that I wanted to have on the left in the top of the grid but because I had gone and added all of the torn edges to this photo I, ended up, I had to put this one on the left hand side and you'll see why once I've put it all together. So I've also grabbed this um, peach floral floral print patterned paper and I have stuck that down behind the smaller photo. Just using my distressing tool again to distress those edges and then I'm going to use this floral paper again to add another layer behind the main photo and I don't need a large piece because I'm just going to add another torn edge alongside the already torn mint green edge. There we go, out of focus again. Just using my scissors to trim this down. I'm not worried about it being straight because you're not going to see the backing. Sorry, you're not going to see that because I've kept it flush with the mat that's already there. And I haven't left much because I didn't want to waste much of this paper. So I'm just tearing a tiny bit off the edge, which just really softens up that right hand side of the photo and helps it to look really nice and distressed. I need to have a look and see why the camera kept doing that. So you'll see there now because I have the distressed edges on opposing sides and I realized then, but I have no choice but to put that framed photo on the right. That's okay. It still works. So I've gone ahead now and I have adhered the photos down and I have also adhered the title, the cut file title down and I did put some foam adhesive behind that cut file just to lift it off the page a little bit. I've gone ahead and used my typewriter, my trusty little vintage typewriter to type up my journaling and cut it down into strips and I have used my Xyron to put the adhesive on the back of those strips. If you are a fan of journaling using strips <laughs> the way that I am. The Xyron is a fantastic way, really quick and easy way to add the adhesive if you've got a fair bit of journaling to stick down, which I did in this case. So the journaling is just talking about how I am not a beach person. Where I live in Western Australia in Perth, we have some amazing beaches, but I'm not a beach person. I don't like the sand. I don't like being hot and sweaty. I don't like the salty feeling on my skin. You may call me weird, but that's just me. But when I'm on holidays, that all changes. And I love just hanging out on the beach, chilling out. I don't go swimming in the water a whole lot, but yeah, I do like relaxing on the beach. And that's where these photos were taken in Cuba and Mexico in 2014 on the beach. So now I am going through my embellishments. I had pulled this sticker book, which was from... The Reject Shopped in Australia. It's a Rosie Studio sticker book. I had pulled this into my kit because I knew that there were some summary stickers that I thought I might like to use. And so I'm just grabbing a couple of those. I flicked through. There's lots of word stickers, which I just, I didn't really want to add any extra words to this layout. I didn't really think that they would work. So in the end, I just go with the two gold foiled palm fronts palm fronts and the little tearly blue umbrella from that sticker book. I'm also going to grab this Maggie Holmes sticker word phrase sticker sheet and there's two different toned gold stickers on them that at the top you can see is the yellow gold and down the bottom is the rose gold so I'm just looking at the rose gold to be consistent because those uh, stickers that I pulled from the sticker pad had rose gold on them. I'm just keeping that nice and consistent. So I pull three off there. One is just three little love hearts. Another one is a rose gold, a sticker that says loving this right now. And the other one says hashtag gorgeous, which I thought worked in well with my title. I've got this little tray of die cuts and embellishments that I've pulled out of my stash. So what you're going to see right now is a heck of a lot of the back of my head and a lot of messing around with just seeing I pulled all of these out 
based on the color scheme and what I wanted to do with the layout. So now I'm just auditioning them. I'm just going through, playing with them, seeing where I want to create my clusters, seeing which things will work. I really wanted to use that glow, but the pink just wasn't quite right. So that doesn't make it onto the layout. I apologize for the amount of times that you're going to see the back of my head. In my previous videos, I realized that I was working too far down from the camera. So a lot of the work that I was doing was off camera. Now I've fixed that, but the trade off is that I didn't realize quite how close to the camera I was and I'm sticking my big head in front of it a lot. So I apologize for that. I am constantly learning about creating videos. So I definitely know I want to have a cluster down on the right hand side of that main photo. At the moment, I'm thinking about putting another little cluster down there where one of the torn edges is down the bottom left, but I don't end up putting anything there. In the end, I go with two, run with two little embellishment clusters, one down the bottom right and one up in the top left of that beach photo. lots at the back of my head well really it's the top of my head isn't it hopefully that's it so I have this little rose gold mini wide paper clip which came from Felicity Jane I love these paper clips I've got them in so many different colors and I yeah I love it when I can bring them into the layout uh, that's another little die cut piece from Felicity Jane there it's a little, tiny little tag that says happy so I'm just running some plain white twine through that and I'm going to knot the end and then I will hang that off the paper clip and just leave it hanging down alongside the photo. And I'll come back to finishing that off in a little while. So by now I'm sure, pretty sure that I'm going to have that cluster up to the top right of the photo. So now I'm just working on how I'm going to, what I'm, how I'm going to build that. So I do grab those two little palm fronds pop them either side of the photo and then I'm going to stick that umbrella down. At first I stick it flat on the page and then I take it away and I add some foam dots to the back of the umbrella which I've done just now just to give it a little bit of lift and a little bit of dimension. And there we go popping that back in. So that's just lifted it off the page a little bit more so it's not quite a flat, it's not so much of a flat embellishment cluster. So now I'm going and I'm threading that twine through the paper clip and then I'm going to stick the paper clip back alongside the photo and I do come back later and tuck the end of that twine, the knotted end of that twine underneath the photo and put some wet glue down which you won't see me do because I do that off camera and put some wet glue down just to hide the knotted end of the top of that twine. So I've got this green gold foil tag which has got some numbers on it. I played around with it in a few different places but couldn't find where I wanted it so I cut it in half and I'm going to stick that down up the top just to add a little bit more width, a little bit more bulk to that embellishment cluster so that and to tie it in so that that umbrella doesn't look like it's floating in the middle of nowhere. And then with the other part that I cut off, what I, what I will do a little bit later is I'm going to use one a little bow die to bring in some of that same green color to the cluster down the bottom right. So when I stuck my journaling down, I had left off one little piece that said Cuba and Mexico 2014 because I wasn't sure if I wanted to have that at the bottom of my journaling or if I wanted to add it to an embellishment cluster. So I do end up going and adding it to the embellishment cluster on the bottom right. I've got this pink flamingo, which of course is not at all related to my photos or my story, except for the fact that, I don't know, it was pink. It was a flamingo. It's tropical, I think. So yeah, I just decided to go with it. I think, don't even know what collection that would have come from. I have a whole little container of die cut pieces that I pull from when I need to. I've also got this little um, signpost that is black with some rose gold foil. I've added a little bit of foam adhesive or sorry some foam dots to the back of it. It says happy. Pretty sure that came out of a Rosie's studio die cut pack. 
I've also got this little stamp piece that says picture perfect. I'm adding some wet glue behind that. And I'm going to stick it on top of the little flamingo in the corner of that photo. I thought the stamp went really well because I was traveling. And then of course the picture perfect. Gotta love a selfie. So I have stuck that Cuba and Mexico, May 2014, last little piece of journaling down underneath that cluster. And now I'm going to stick some of those rose gold strips from the Maggie Holmes little sheet. There's those three hearts. I have grabbed the piece that says loving this right now and I'm sticking that onto the black and white frame. And then the third one, I'm going to cut a little fishtail notched banner edge next to where it says gorgeous and then that's going to go up in the little top cluster there so there's that little bow that I cut out using the off cut from the tag which is up on the top left I got the Coco and Reno bow dies set and it is so so good so many cute little bows so I've got this little packet of adhesive sequins and because I wanted to bring in a few more pops of black to tie in with the black and white of the frame and the black of that happy tag, I'm just going to add a couple of the black sequins, figuring out where I want to put them. So I'm going to put one down the bottom and I do have one up in the top left there, which you can kind of see it's a bit reflected with my light. Play around with adding another one quite a bit but I decide there's nowhere else that I really want to put another one of those black sequins. So I just leave it at that. And then I am grabbing some enamel dots. Oh, that's what I do. I had some double-sided tape to the back of that happy tag to stick it down just to stop it from hanging loose so that it can stay where I want it to stay. Still trying to make one of those black sequins work, but it doesn't. So now I've got some enamel dots. I'm going to use two different colors. You can see I've torn a little piece of the paper up there down in the bottom right. So I'm putting a pink enamel dot down to cover that up. I'll put another pink enamel dot in the top cluster. And then I bring in a few of the tealy green enamel dots to finish off. So that does finish off this layout. As usual, I've got some close up photos coming at the end. As I said, if you are interested in participating in the Mini Kit Monday Challenge, all of the details are posted in the description box below. I would love for you to go ahead and join the Facebook group and would love to see what you have to create with your Mini Kit for the month of January. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.